Hi everyone, it's me, Alna, from TwinsMommy.com. And so for today, I'm going to do the um, blog traffic daily tips for today. We're going to talk about Pinterest. All right, so if you're here, come tell me. And I'm sorry, I said today I was going to do the Facebook Live a lot of it later in the afternoon, but my twins left this morning with my mother-in-law, so they'll be back in the afternoon. So that's why I bumped this Facebook Live lower. Um, so I'm super sorry <laughs> if you already know that this one's going to be live later. So, um, but if you're here, just, you know, let me know. In either case, I'm going to, sorry, talk about Pinterest and um, give you two, two hacks that you may not know or I've, I haven't heard of. And um, I just recently started doing it and it seems to be helping uh, grow my impressions and my saves and click throughs. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm live in the right place. Excuse me. Oh, I am. Okay, good. And I'm going to go, I'm just going to let everyone know in my Facebook group that I'm live right now. So hold on. Okay. So I hope you've been having a good week so far. Oh, I'm not having any luck here. Okay. All right. Okay, everyone. So yesterday I um, did my Facebook Live and then I had to go to the dentist. So I did a cleaning and um, everything went well. It took a little bit of time. They were quite busy. So um, I was there like almost all day, it seemed like. <laughs> um, but I'm glad. I got everything taken care of and let's get started. All right. So if you're new to Pinterest, um, the one thing that's that you need to know right now is that Pinterest is changing their strategy to help content creators right now. So their focus seems to be on content creators so that they can create content for their consumers on Pinterest. So the pinners that pin recipes and look for products and um, things like that. So they are offering some insider tips to help content creators um, get those click throughs, get those impressions on their profile. All right. And the one thing that you need to realize when you are pinning your pins on Pinterest is that your followers are an important metric to, to all of that. They're sort of the deciding factor for Pinterest to see if your pins are worth pushing out to a bigger audience. All right. So when you have, when you don't have a lot of followers, that's okay, but you need to um, look at your followers and make sure that they're targeted followers for you. My, one of my most recent profiles is my freelance writing profile. And I don't have a lot of followers. I think I have 500 or even a little bit less than 500. But my impressions and my click throughs are, are growing because the people that are following me are basically just freelancers. Um, so I've optimized my profile for that. And so when my, when my, the writers and the freelancers see my pins, they engage with it so that Pinterest pushes them out to other writers and other freelancers and other people that maybe want to work from home and things like that and brought in my their reach so that my pin gets seen all over the place. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to share with you just two quick hacks that you can start doing on your Pinterest profile so that you can get noticed, um, from other pinners. Okay. And, um, 
in my updated Ready, Set, Block for Traffic course, I have my whole module on Pinterest really helps you become that authoritative uh, person on in Pinterest, in Pinterest's eyes. So your profile is authoritative. Okay. So yeah, just say hi if you're here. I want to um, just share some tips for you. All right. So I'm going to go to my Smart Mom profile, my Smart Mom Ideas profile. Let me just share my screen. Okay. So this is my profile. I've been tweaking it for um, more optimization because of the changes that Pinterest has been doing. Um, one of the things is they updated their um, the number of characters that you can have on your, that can be displayed on your title. So I think about like 30 characters or something, but you can, I guess this is another hack. You can um, have a longer title if you update it on your smartphone. So for me, um, smart mom ideas, parenting tips fit, but with the little um, pipe cleaner, whatever that's called, I didn't have, um, I couldn't include those spaces. So I went on mobile on my phone and just updated it with the space around that and it worked. So um, you can leave your title as is if you have a long title. My smart mom ideas before this was a long title, it had... Um, smart mom ideas and then the, the pipe cleaner. And then I had frugal living ideas, parenting tips, organization tips for stay at home moms or something broad like that. And that's fine. I mean, I could have a very lifestyle, very niche topics for my title. But again, with Pinterest new strategy and, and what they're telling content creators, they are really focusing on, uh, profiles that are niched down. All right there's going to be this big push for niching down. And, but that's not to say you can't have a lifestyle blog. Smart Mom Ideas is a lifestyle blog with multi topics, but my overall theme are parenting tips. Um, I'm giving tips for parents, for moms specifically. All right. So find that, that umbrella theme and start using that for your title. All right. And so I did that. I changed that for parenting tips. So hopefully over time, um, Pinterest will recognize my profile based on my followers engagement that when someone is searching for tips for parents or for moms, that my profile or my pins will show up. Okay. So I guess that's one hack is to, um, so I have three hacks. I might have more as I'm talking about this, <laughs> um, niching down your title, even if you have a lifestyle blog. All right. And if you guys have any other ideas or any questions about that, just pop them in and hopefully I can see them here. I always get so nervous with the tech that I'm using because I don't know if I'm live, if you can hear me and if there's comments like those little indicators for me, like sort of freak me out, but I guess I could just talk to myself. I suppose <laughs> I have time. My twins aren't here. Yeah, so they're, they're occupied. So I guess I could just talk to myself, but anyways, <laughs> I digress. Um, the second part that you want to do to help you optimize your profile is your description, your little bio description right here. All right. There is different ways you can, um, show your credibility, show your authority by what you say in your profile. Um, but the, a little hack you can do is, after a while, so this is only good for, oh, hey, hey, Claude, Claudia. Um, oh, let me answer this question real quick. So niching down my title would mean to shorten the title. I started off at a bunch of keywords in my title. Yeah, yeah, I would suggest that since Pinterest, um, since Pinterest is shortening the characters for that title to 30, it makes me think that they don't want you to add all those keywords for keyword stuffing. They want you to niche down to one main topic is what I am um, thinking about that change is why they're doing that. And it's confirmed. Oh, hey, it's confirmed when Pinterest did some webinars in the past and talked about content creators and that focus. So yeah. Oh, hey, Hida. Hida, Hida. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I'm so glad you're here. 
All right. So as I was saying, the next part, the next hack that I'm going to share with you is in your bio description right now. Okay. So in your bio description, you usually just say, you know, who you help and what your blog is. Like that's typical, right? That's typical what you can say, but a hack that you can do, and this is only for pinners that have been pinning for a while and that have top pins. So you can see how one of Pinterest's new themes is showing you your top pins um, and then suggesting that you promote them, right? Because they want people to start using their platform and get paid advertisement and things like that, right? So that's another push that Pinterest is trying to show us, but you can use this in a different way. Um, so I know that these are my top pins and I know the keywords that I used in these descriptions and what those are keyworded for because I placed them in there, right? You can add those keywords in here in your bio description. So um, how to live on one income is for this pin and toddler snacks is for this one and labor for the first time is for that one. So I have my top three pins with the top three keywords for those pins in my bio description. Okay, so when you're crafting your bio description and if you have popular pins, use those keywords that you created in your Pinterest description for the bio description that you have here. Okay, does that make sense? So that's that's another little hack. So I had the one, two. Oh, and there's one more too. <laughs> Just trying to think of all the little hacks that I have here that I can share with you today. All right, so if you have any questions about that, just uh, pop them in. Hopefully I can answer them as they roll up. Okay, so we have your title and your description optimized for the keywords that you want and that's niched down enough so that everything makes sense in the overall theme that you want, all right? So when you think of homeschooling, what are the overall themes under homeschooling? When you think of um, sewing and knitting, what are the like crafts, like what do you think underneath that, okay? Or um, pregnancy, things like that. All right, and then the one other tip that I can offer you right now is when you start, um, when you pin a pin to Pinterest, it's okay, you can do manual pinning. Like um, Pinterest has stated that there is no benefit to manual pinning. So um, if that means that, a pin from Tailwind versus a pin that you manually pinned has no differences to Pinterest's eyes, okay? The only benefit to manual pinning is that you can, um, you can know where your pin is sent at what time, right? I've, I have my Tailwind queue set up, but I don't know what pin is going to what board at what time, like unless I go to my Tailwind profile and look and see. Every day I do that and I don't want to do that, right? That's too time consuming. So occasionally I will just manually pin a pin. Um, so you want to do that from your blog or from mostly from your blog. You can pin from um, Pinterest, like so even if we go here. So I'll just show you from here. Um, I'm going to pin this one, okay? So what you want to do is when you um, pin a pin and you have the description, when you create the description here, the first sentence should have the keyword that you have a board title already for it. All right, I have a board title called snack, snack, toddler snack ideas. Okay, and so I have a variation of that as uh, snack ideas for toddlers. So have the board that you're going to place that pin when you when you create that description in the first sentence, have that that board name in it as the keyword. Do you understand? Like, I, it's hard for me to explain that. So I'm going to save it to that. That just strength, strengthens the pin for Pinterest to understand what that pin is about, that it's been keyworded by you for snack ideas for toddlers and it's been keyworded by the board you place it on which is toddler snack ideas. All right. So that's a little tidbit there that you can start doing. All right. All right, so those are my three main hacks that you can start implementing today if you want. And um 
see if that will help you with your click throughs or not. Now, if you guys have any questions, I'm here for a few more minutes, but, um, other than that, I hope that will help you. I have some great news coming up later today. So if you're on my email list, um, I'm going to be sharing something exciting. And, um, if not come join me and, um, have a great afternoon. Bye.